it's like a multiple choice on the next test, but, but on practice too. Okay, so Johannes Kepler came up with these laws. These are just observations. This is what he observed to happen. Oh, the bell. Okay. Let's start with red. Okay. All Kepler did was keep very careful track of the orbits of the planets around the sun and then just do some math with them. Uh, he was one of the first people. He was actually using someone else's, Tycho Brahe's observations uh, for years and years and years of data of the motions of the planets. And they determined definitively that yes, all the planets, including the Earth, go around the sun. Uh, and they actually had the distances to the planets or from the planets to the sun figured out by watching their orbits. Uh, for years and years, <coughs> and they realized the distances are changing, so they said, okay, the planets don't go in s exact circles, because they actually tried figuring it out with perfect circles, and it didn't work. The math came out wrong for their time and distance. Come on, zoom in. There we go. That's better. All right. Giant text behind me. Okay. equal areas and equal times, so if you made up like pizza slice sections of the planet's orbit, even if it's getting closer or farther away to the sun, because it's like an oval, it's an oval pizza, uh, the, each section would be a different area, like if you counted out one month per pizza slice, okay, for example, the Earth would be 12 slices then, but, and even though they're different shapes, because we're in an ellipse, <coughs> every slice would, every 12, every one month slice, would have a would have the same area, okay. And this got Isaac Newton thinking, like, hey, if I can graph a circle, if I can graph a shape, and then calculate the area, that tells me something important that wasn't obvious from the graph. Like the time is the same for pieces for different areas. Hmm. And it's those are like representations of distance and velocity, and I can get the time from a graph. Fascinating. And then he invented a new branch of math. Okay, and then the square of the time period, capital T squared, is proportional, we do this like fishy symbol for proportion, to the cube of the radius. And we can actually prove that one now with our, um, with our math. So that was, Isaac Newton was extremely confident in, this, in his law of gravitation and his laws of motion up till now because he could take this decades of data from Tycho and Kepler and get all the right answers. He could back predict. Okay, he didn't have any theories of what to do next, but he became very full of himself and a huge jerk. Okay. But he got the right answers. So, what do you think? Would you like to always get the right answers, even if everyone uh, thinks you're a jerk? We don't need to study ellipses. But actually, okay, if we're moving in a circle now, we proved with just geometry, Newton, of course, could do this proof, that you accelerate towards the center. So hopefully, <coughs> so we have our sun here. That's actually the symbol for the sun. It's a dot with a circle. And then we have our little planet. And if we have our AR vector towards the sun and our perpendicular speed vector, and the speed is governed by, we proved yesterday, the square root of gm over r. Isn't it? Should I get that again? Or you're OK with that? came out of the mess. Hopefully you can see, okay, if this if this speed speeds up, okay, it's gonna like swing in. It would swing in and speed up, but then it get like carries through and it would have to spin back out again. Okay. So as the the areas ended up being equal for equal times, because if you make your slices like it starts to go faster as it gets closer. 
So I expect you to look, if I give you an equation like this, closer, so smaller r, equals faster. You can think, aha, I'm Isaac Newton, I'm such a genius. Because I can do denominators. Closer is faster. If I make that r smaller, I have to get speed is more. Okay, so that's all he did. He thought he was so smart. So I expect you to do the same. You're also very smart. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. The radius has to increase also. Okay. The breaking, the the punchline, why, why I keep making fun of Newton and why he's really so famous, is he basically defined and discovered momentum, which is a fun unit for after fall break. Uh, but if you discover something fundamental like momentum, they'll name all the laws after you, too. Uh, that was his huge thing. He rubbed it in everybody's face that he discovered this other stuff. This is actually not the real law of gravity. It's just a one simple enough we can do it in our class. Okay, but he did discover momentum and define it correctly. And we still use that today in modern physics. So, go Newton. Okay, we got this weird thing with t cubed. And, no, it's t squared and r cubed. And they're proportional. Okay. And this is actually incredibly impressive that Kepler noticed this. Okay. Because, so remember, our acceleration due, our centripetal acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. We'll call it g prime because it's not 10. It's g at whatever orbit you're at. It's gm over r squared. In this case, this would be the mass of the sun for all the planets. The sun is about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And sun and other stars are so massive, we just measure them all in multiples of the sun's mass. Okay, like when you hear a, a black hole might have 30 solar masses or a billion solar masses. We're just multiplying by that number because that's so much more massive than everything else. But that equals v squared over r. See that? And yesterday we combined, hopefully it's not too bad, the speed around our circle enough path is 2 pi r over t. Okay? So we got rid of 1 r and we squared our v and we got big G times mass of the sun over 1 r equals 4 pi squared r squared over capital T. And so what Kepler really noticed, and Newton proved it, it's a little bit impressive because Newton didn't actually know the number for G. He couldn't measure anything well enough. You cross off one r there, and there's our r cubed, okay? And so you get r cubed divided by the time squared. So this is the radius, the mean radius of the orbit, average radius, divided by the time period to go once around. It's a year. In outer space. Equals big G times the mass of the sun over 4 pi squared for all planets. And what Kepler actually did is he said, wow, if I, I estimate pretty much with geometry and telescopes and stuff and careful angle measurements, I measure the distance from the Earth to the Sun and divide by a year squared in days probably. If I do the same thing for all the other, if I just cube and square, so that's all he had. He had arithmetic. He had a chalkboard, okay, and he just multiplied these numbers out in way <coughs> they skid that. That's right. He said AUs, which is astronomical units, which is the Earth's radius from the sun, the Earth's distance from the sun, is one astronomical unit. So he was just comparing the distances, right, because he didn't have, he couldn't measure miles and kilometers across space. He did it with similar triangles, right? <coughs> So he did, he did as a fraction of the Earth's distance to the sun. If I, if I multiply it by itself three times, cube it, and divide by the orbit in days squared, that's the same fraction for all the planets. Oh my goodness. 
divine creation. They were just, they were designed that way. They all have the exact same number. Well, actually, they're just moving in a circle. I guess you could say the the uh, geometry of the universe was designed a certain way to work like this for triangles to be true in 180 degrees. I guess so. Okay, but. <clears throat> You can just combine these formulas for circular motion, and it's the sun's gravity that's accelerating these things towards the center, and so therefore it actually must be the same number is equal to radius cubed over time period squared for all the planets, and it is, and for all the little Oort objects and everything in the solar system, okay, because it's the sun holding them all. <clears throat> Excuse me. I usually put this on the test, but I don't always use it. An astronomical unit. Astronomy Club thinks this is really cool. It's cool enough that I know how much it is. It's 1.50, or maybe 1.51, times 10 to the 11th meters, I think. And that's the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And notice how much bigger it is than the radius of the Earth. Okay. But that's Kepler's third law, and I still think it's really impressive that he noticed that. Kepler was rich and really bored, and so he liked to measure the planets and stars, and of course all the stars in the, the galaxy seem to just stay the same, but the planets move, and so the, the only there's only eight or nine of them moving, as you can see, and so uh, he just measured their orbits around the sun. We're all in the same plane, so you can tell when they pass the sun, and so that's been once around and figured out they're moving in circles, but he just, you know, that's all he could do, so he just liked to multiply numbers and add and subtract and see what patterns. Like, they weren't very good at math back then. They did they did not have calculus. This was, this was a generation or two before Newton, and he invented or helped invent calculus. So imagine if math stopped at Algebra 2 and Trig, because there was no more math. I mean, we wouldn't have computers or anything, but math class would be pretty easy. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. Sure. All right, then. Then the homework that's due tomorrow, at the start, if I don't get any questions, is uh, <coughs> is basically just play with these equations. You could set up the gravity equation, like if there's some unknown mass that's causing a certain orbit, you could now play with all the equations and figure out the orbit using those examples. Where's my recorder? Okay.